What's going on guys? Uh, today we're going to be touching on the subject on how to put a H-series into your 6th gen Accord. If you want to figure out how to, uh, stay tuned, find out. Alright, on today's video we're going to be touching on a few subjects here before. Um, got my clipboard ready so you know it came prepared. Uh, starting with we're going to go over engines first. I'll leave timestamps over here. We'll go over the engines. Uh, we'll go over the electronics, the ECU, what's involved there. And then thirdly, we'll go over parts needed and what uh, to expect when you tackle this job. Okay, first of all, you want to decide on which engine you want to choose when you're putting an H swap in there. There's a couple different H series. We're going to be focusing on the H22 in this case. Uh, popular swap here. When selecting an H series, you could go probably, I'll date this with a 92 to 96, which is a closed deck block, to the 97 and up, which is open deck. Um, in this case, I got an open deck. I'll be covering that type of motor in this type of chassis. Um, I just did that for OBD2 reasons. I will touch that a little bit later down here. But if you were trying to turbo your vehicle, a closed deck option from the 92 to 96, would probably be the way to go there because that way you got a little bit more cylinder support and that way you don't crack a sleeve when you start boosting it. Let's go over OBD2 versus OBD1. This chassis right here, the CG Accords, um, I believe it's around 98 to 2000 there. OBD2 is from 96 and up. So the factory harness on this one is a OBD2 style harness. That means you'll have the OBD2 style injector clips which are specific. The OBD ones were a little bit older if you're familiar with the older Civics. And again, you'll have a different ECU plug on this one, but we'll go into that when we start talking about ECUs. Speaking of ECUs, let's go touch into that right now. When it comes to ECUs, some states require if the vehicle's OBD2 to leave it OBD2 for emissions reasons. We're up in Canada, we're a little bit different here. I decided to go OBD1 for the fact uh, I can tune it. So it is tunable. The OBD2 ones, you'll have to go different ways around it. OBD1 ECUs are fairly common to come by. Uh, tried and true for many years, cheap, easy, reliable, and that's the way I decided to go. Also, you'll get benefits with a OBD1 ECU to for options like disabling your EGR when uh, when if you want to disable some other emission stuff. Uh, depending on your tuning software that you run, you can get a check engine shift light. You can wire up your two uh, two step, all that other fun stuff there. So going over uh, EC, which ECUs and which engine choices, I'll mostly be covering the H22A4, that would be an open deck, and I'm also running this ECU off a OBD1 Civic or Integra VTEC ECU, that is for a 5-speed chassis, um, so a P06, P28, the more common ones available there. Those ECUs will have to be chipped by a tuner, and then a base map would have to be burnt onto it, an H22 base map. A base map, all that is, is a factory ECU settings, tunes, the fuel tables, the spark tables, the VTEC crossovers, that kind of stuff. Gets burned onto that Civic map, so it's pretty much a prelude ECU onto a Civic ECU, if that makes sense. The, a lot of the prelude ECUs, is, a lot of the prelude ECUs and also the factory ECU can't be tuned. I say that liberally. Um, but also they'll have an immobilizer and you want to get around that immobilizer. That's why I also recommend converting back to OBD1. Um, going over the parts, we'll go over what is involved to convert back over to OBD1. Let's go over to the chassis. I'll show you how we did that. For anything, this is an OBD1 ECU. You'll see the harness plugs here are a little bit different than what's uh, found in the vehicle. This is kind of what's involved to switch over your OBD2 to OBD1 here. We used a factory harness that came on the cord that's untouched. Uh, I'll show you what we had to do to modify that in the engine bay, but we're in the passenger side footwell here. This is the factory Accord plugs. This is an OBD2B, I believe. There's a difference between OBD2A and OBD2B. So that's an OBD2B to OBD1 uh, jumper harness. This is a P20, so this is actually a non-VTEC ECU converted to VTEC. Um, you do some research into that, that's too far, too deep to cover in this video, but do your own research with that, you'll save a little bit of money. If not, just grab the VTEC ECU. Uh, this one is chipped with Neptune, and that's running an H22 map. But you can see it's pretty simple wiring. 
an American built harness. Don't buy the Chinese ones. I've had somebody message me and the pins were bent on it. So recommend spend the extra 20 bucks buy the American built ones. OBD2 bead, OBD1 ECU jumper. This is the old F series that came out of it. I'll show you the injectors have the same clips if it's OBD2. That's why I decided to use a OBD2 H22. Um, again, this one, these ones have this, the push disconnects compared to the older style ones that just had a metal ring that you had to screw around with a little metal clip. These ones you just squeeze and pull, simplify it here. Um, the other issue you would have to do is the idle air control valve. It's this guy that usually bolts the block of the back of the motor here. This one, as you could tell by looking at it, is a three pin. If you look over to the H22, if you look over to the H22 here, it is a two wire and it's also at the front of the engine here. So what I did is I just disconnected the ground wire. I believe it's black and um, some people say ground it. You don't need to. I believe I just left it off and that's all you need to do. Next issue we'll be talking about is a distributor. Uh, as you can see, this one has an internal coil. You see it's all self, everything's all self-contained within the distributor. But this distributor only has one harness plug with one, two, three, four pins. If you look at the H22A4, you see that we have an external coil. That's one that has a lead that goes to the center of the distributor. Then on our distributor, we got uh, two harness plugs here. So we're gonna do the short and sweet. Um, what it is, I unplugged my distributor, har I mean my external coil harness, just so I could show you guys here. Um, the, the only wires I forgot to mention here, we're running a factory Accord harness. Only thing that we had to steal off a of preload harness was this four pin connector. It's only got three active pins. This one goes to the, this one goes to the coil. We also had to take the harness for the IACV. And then also these two harnesses right here that goes to the distributor is what we had to do. So what we do is we just took the, pig, the connector pigtails, cut them, and just wired it to our Accord harness. So not too many wires here. There's nine wires, actually, if you want to be specific here. So while looking at our uh, distributor here, we got two power wires. They just come in and out. So yellow, big gauge yellow, and uh, big gauge black with a yellow tracer. Those are going to be your 12 volts. So this one, you can see this is a factory Accord one. Notice the gauge difference. This is about a, let's say, 14 gauge. And this steps up to, let's say, I could be totally wrong, to about like a 10 gauge, let's say. So there is a thickness difference here. Ignore my tape job, I have to rip this all apart for you guys. If you guys appreciate this, give me a like, please. Um, so it comes in, this is a factory Accord one right here. So it converts over to the harness plug for the coil. Going out, it goes to this distributor connector. So yellow, 12 volt, it feeds a 12 volt to the distributor. Blue. If you ever wired a tack on a Honda, blue is just tack. If your factory tack will work. This is if you just want to run a big old hot boy one on the dash. Don't worry about it. Coming to your other distributor plug here. This one will do the, I believe it's for the igniter. The green wire stays with green wire to coil. This one, this wire right here is going to be the blinking of the uh, ignition control module. They'll pulse the coil, which will tell it to fire the distributor. So it's pretty simple. You wire 112 volt into it. The, sorry, the factory 12 volt, you don't got to run it off battery, just the factory black yellow wire goes in, the wire that comes out goes to the distributor, the green wire goes to the, the other side of the distributor. Simple. So out of that, while well, that's out of the equation, so after green's done, we got a black, a yellow, and a yellow with a green tracer. So all the other colors line up. Super simple. You don't need no write-up on how to do this. It's idiot proof. Wrapping up this video, let's get this shit done. Uh, we're gonna be touching on the parts that are needed to put this, put the H-Series in where the F-Series used to be. You will need a conversion bracket that goes onto just the driver's side. An F-Bracket mounts an F-Bracket, and H-Bracket stays with an H-Bracket. So when you get your H-Series motor with this bracket, leave the bracket on. Hopefully this makes it easier. Your bracket, that one that mounts through the timing side, that stays with the motor, do not touch that. This is a factory Accord mount, the rubber insulator. This one you'll need to keep. Just factory. Only part you need to buy, I bought this from Innovative. It's just a H-Series bracket adapter. So this way is a cheap way to go. I think it's sub 50 bucks Canadian, probably cheaper for American folks. This is all you need to throw it in mount-wise. This rubber mount stays the same on the chassis. These are the old 20-year-old ones. 
don't even need to worry about them. And this bracket comes with the engine when you purchase your engine, hopefully. Your header, most people upgrade the header. This is a H, as you can see, this is a H221 bolted to an F series. It does not bolt onto. Um, you'll need to deal with what, however you want to do a header. I got an aftermarket one. Um, you saw, I made a video of that. You guys interested, go check on my channel. Uh, that's not the time or place. Um, but you see it does not bolt up. So you'll need to factor in welding your exhaust at the collector where it mounts to your mid pipe or whatever. That'll have to be adjusted. So put some money aside for that. And then also whatever header you want to buy, this would be a good time to upgrade. If not, these factory H series ones are nice because they're tubular, got a really good design and it's kind of hard to beat the power unless you go with a super high end header. When you are purchasing your H22, I believe if you want to go my route with the H22A4 that I used in that one out of a prelude, I suggest, uh, I su highly suggest, I don't see how you guys can do it, grab a prelude out of a non-SH. The SHs are the super handling, I believe that's what SH stands for, but they have a different half shaft, the axle that comes out of the transmission to the engine. That one's a little bit different, just that intermediate shaft where it bolts to the block. Uh, so keep it simple, a 97 to 01 prelude base model, non-SH, no bells, no whistles. Uh, that's the way you wanna go. Axles all line up. The hardest part about this job actually dropping that motor in was just taking out the axles. Uh, just a quick tip for you guys, if you do plan on doing this, um, you want to pick up a few horses this is your balance shaft if you want to um you get a balance shaft elite which takes this out and there's a uh semi shaft inside there you could disable all that stuff with a kit but if you're poor like i am there you go five horsepower proven i believe it covered all the bells and whistles i used a factory f23 um a cord chassis throttle cable as you can see it's all got a bracket and stuff i had to rig here it's been like this for a couple of months but it works if not if you want something sleek i think maybe a prelude one should work when it comes to the fuel line this is the factory accord hard line where it goes into this little antler the soft line i have to put a little uh this is all factory here as well for i believe the preludes or sorry for the accord and it bolts onto the fuel rail make sure you get a prelude fuel rail mine didn't I tried to screw around with the Accord one with that pulse dampener on it. And I don't know, it didn't work for me, it might work for you. I recommend make sure you pick yours up with the H22 fuel rail. So complete motor uh, with header, that's up to you. Intake manifold, uh, I deleted I IEBs, they weren't running on this type of ECU. You can look into that further, but um, yeah, make sure it's got that timing you redo. Uh, distributor make sure it comes with a distributor and make sure you at least got semi semi of a harness you could have a full uncut harness or if you could pick one up a uh, harness cheaper or if you got a junkyard with a lot of preludes beside you go and uh snip these two connectors the coil connector and then the idle air control valve uh connector and just bunking it put it in your pocket while go pay for it <laughs> whatever you do that's up to you also guys forgot to mention your temp gauge uh, the H22, I think, has a analog uh, reading sensor. Uh, the F23, the later clusters, I think 2000 and up, I think if, if you're 98 to 2000, you might have the older cluster. So what you can do is you could swap a cluster in and then the temp gauge would work. What I did, um, I used a, just a cheap auto meter water temp gauge. And then I just tapped in a sending unit into the coolant line there. And I just used a piece of PVC 90 there. And then I just RTV'd it down there so it looks like a gauge pod. And that way I'm able to read my coolant temperatures in degrees, which is a little bit nicer than just a needle with hot and cold. Um, just a small piece of information you guys might need to consider. It's not necessary. I like knowing my temperature of my vehicle. Um, fan switches, fan controls, fans operate, uh, nothing else besides wiring the IACV, idle air control valve, the distributor, and the coil. That's all it takes. So there you guys go. Hopefully I detailed all this stuff for you guys. I've just been getting a lot of questions. I want to sort it out and hopefully help the community out a little bit for you guys with the Accords because there's not too much info information about these cars. But if you want to put an H-Series in it, have fun and not too much wiring if you do it the way I told you to. I think that's probably simplest, easiest way to do it. Um, there's probably many different other ways to do this. I, this is what worked for me. Uh, if you guys have your own way, want to share a bit open discussion in the comments, I appreciate that. Hopefully it helps some other guys out as well. 
Um, but thanks for watching. If you guys appreciate this video, drop a like because I took a lot of time out of my day to set this up. And I even brought a clipboard down and some notepads, paper, pencils, all that stuff. So hopefully you guys enjoy. Hopefully this helps one of you guys out. And hopefully we see more H-Series swapped accords out there.